These spectacular images are from the three Delhi Darbars of 1877, 1903 and 1911. They capture the rise of the power of the British crown and the pomp and pageantry they used to iterate their power to the millions of Indians whom they ruled over. These darbars were captured through a number of iconic photographs and paintings and a collection of this can be seen at the exhibition organized at the DAG in Janpat, Delhi and curated by eminent Delhi historians Swapna Little and Rana Safwi. The Delhi Darbars are actually the three events that are held in Delhi, 1877, 1903, and 1911, to proclaim the British monarch, respectively Queen Victoria, Edward VII, and George V, as Emperor or Empress of India. This was a title that the British monarchs had taken. So these events um, were all held in Delhi. And that is actually quite surprising because the capital actually was Calcutta. The British capital in India at that point was Calcutta. So why did they pick Delhi? And that is really the big story of the Delhi Darbars because it uh, shows us that for the British, Delhi was crucial not from an administrative point of view, not from a point of view of um, general uh, in their scheme of things as an important city, but when it came to defining what imperial authority was, what their empire was, what this imperial title was, Delhi was crucial because they had this impression and a correct one actually, that in a lot of Indians' minds, Still, many, many years after Delhi had ceased to be the capital of empires, uh, which had been the Mughal Empire, various Sultanate dynasties, etc., people at some level still associated power, authority, sovereignty with the place of Delhi. And we've tried to show uh, the Darbars through the, this lens of Delhi and how the image of Delhi is so closely interwoven with the Darbar events as well. While all three Darbars were a way of the colonial state to showcase its might, they also differed from each other in subtle ways. 1877 Darbar was mainly to legitimize British rule and uh, to popularize it and to replace the memories of 1857 with new ones. And the places that were chosen also were very were, were connected to the 1857 uprising because the coronation uh, park was in the ridge. That is the part where there was the place of victory for the British. And uh, Delhi again was chosen for its connection to the Mughals as a park captain. Thus, in 1903, uh, Darbar was handled by a cousin. Now, cousin is known as somebody who was, you know, like he uh, was very involved in India. He repaired a whole lot of monuments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He wanted to show that the British are bringing modernity as well as our protectors of your tradition. So that is why the princes are in all their regalia. So they form the backdrop that it's the, you know, like the, it's the British emperor or the empress who is ruling, but they are supported and paid obeisance to by the Indian ruler. So somewhere that message went down that this is how we are, you know, like we are keepers of your tradition. And uh, the 1911 Darbar took place uh, in the backdrop of not only the national movement, but the partition of Bengal. So here it was the king and the queen came for the first time. The British monarch and the consort are here for the first time. So that is a more of a, you know, we are again, we are the rulers, we are keepers of your destiny, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, that uh, we see you as uh, our people. So they come here and uh, it is in this Darbar that the uh, shifting of the capital is also announced. Giles Tillotson from the DAG gives us an insight into how the idea of the exhibition came about. We thought that Delhi would be a good place to start because we knew we had a certain amount of material relating to Delhi and because our main gallery is in Delhi. And so I reached out to two leading historians of the city, Swapna Little and Rana Safi, who are both well known to me and to, to, to the company, uh, to DAG. And we invited them 
to have a look through. We let them loose in the archive and they came up with this idea. Uh, so we thought, well, that sounds interesting. Uh, we may have a different perspective. They would have a different perspective on this from regular historians of the British Raj. While the exhibition showcases a vast collection of objects and photographs, some have very interesting stories behind them. The image of the king and queen standing in Jharoka Darshan. Now this, uh, the Jharoka Darshan was bought, the tradition was borrowed by Akbar from the Rajputs, and now it is being borrowed by the British from the Mughals. So it's, in a sense, it's a continuity, and it shows how everybody is trying to legalize their uh, rule. The other elephant image which appeals to me is also from 1903, and it shows Curzon and uh, Lady Curzon sitting on top um, of an elephant called uh, Lakshman Prasad. And what's interesting, the two aspects that are intriguing about that image, one is, of course, he's had to borrow the elephant. The British, at a much earlier era, would have kept elephants of their own. Octoloni famously had about eight, as many as he did wives. But, um, you know, by Curzon's time at the beginning of the 20th century, the British no longer have a stable of elephants in India. They have to borrow one, in this case, from the Maharaja of Banaras. But the fact that the photographer has recorded the name of the elephant, as well as the name of the viceroy sitting on it, gives you a, a, a slightly different perspective on, on uh, you know, the priorities in, involved here. I think that's right. It's, it, it's, it's more of a photograph of the elephant than it is of Lord Curzon. H.C. Fanshawe's uh, Delhi Past and Present, it was a guidebook. And one thing that this guidebook to me represents is 1903 is the Darbar, uh, and this was published at that time. And this is the Darbar, which put, largely puts the image of Delhi on uh, the international popular uh, imagination. It's a guidebook to Delhi, which kind of anticipates that for the Darbar, a lot of people will come and visit, and therefore they'll be visiting the sites, etc. That book is still in uh, print. And it was widely popular. So it Delhi becomes a tourist destination on a much larger scale uh, through that one book. Today, these images and objects from the three darbars are important reminders of the British attempt at co-opting Indian symbols and traditions to legitimize their rule.